Today we celebrate the Feast of the Chair of Peter. It's a symbol of the authority of the Pope, where, as we know, when the Pope speaks from the chair, ex cathedra, with the authority of the church behind him speaking, saying, I am speaking about faith and morals, and speaking pr purposely saying I'm speaking uh, infallibly, he does speak infallibly. And this is a beautiful thing that we need this type of assurance in our world. You know, some of our Protestant brothers and sisters, they believe all you need to know God's word is the sacred scriptures. But God has given us a church, and this is a great mercy, so that we can know what the scriptures mean. Because otherwise, we, we can look at it and not understand. I think I've shared this before. I got this I don't know if it was from Patrick Madrid or from, anyways, one of those Lighthouse Media CDs a few years ago, where, you know, when you look at written on, on a piece of paper, I never said, you stole money. Well, how do you interpret that? I never said you stole money. Everybody else did, but I never did. I never said you stole money. I never said you stole money. I wrote it down on Facebook. I never said you stole money. I was talking about someone else. I never said you stole money. You got it from some other means. I never said you stole money. I said you stole diamonds. What, does, what do those six words mean? And they can be interpreted six different ways, and probably more, just by looking at them written on the page. And so God, in His great mercy, has given us a church and a magisterium, which is the teaching authority of the church, so that we can know not just the sacred scriptures written down, but so that we can have an interpretation that, yes, this is right. This is what this means. And the church typically looks and says there are levels of meaning, so there's not just one right meaning, but there's levels of meaning, there's the, the literal meaning, and then there's all sorts of spiritual meanings in terms of anagogical and allegorical and, and moral, but ultimately we have the church to say, no, that's a wrong interpretation of this scripture passage. This is the right way, because we need the church in order to understand what it is that God is speaking in our lives. And I was thinking about this this morning, realizing, you know, how much we need this mercy, because if we didn't have the church to kind of lead us and guide us in this teaching, what would happen? Well, we'd be like so many other people thinking, okay, I think this is right, but I'm not sure. You know, in antiquity, as people were, were trying to figure out how the world was, how God was. But before they had this revelation, they didn't know. They might have had some good guesses, some good reasoning, but then said, well, but, but am I right? Is this the right way to think? Are my actions good? Are they pleasing to Almighty God or not? And God has given us this grace, to, to use Jesus' words, a rock on which we can stand and say, here's the truth. Here's the truth. And while we have had all manner of popes over the last couple millennia, some were saints, all were sinners, and some were scoundrels. God has promised that none of those scoundrels would teach officially from the seed of Peter anything that goes against the very heart of who God is. Anything that is uh, uh, heresy. And so we can trust that God is holding us in his hands. Not because the Pope is such a great guy. In fact, you look at the very first Pope. What a mess up he was. Peter was exceptionally good 
at sticking his foot in his mouth. In fact, I think he's, there were times he got both feet in his mouth. And yet, that first weak link of the chains of Peter throughout the centuries was held in the hands of Jesus. And so we turn to God in grateful, in gratitude, grateful that he has given us this assurance, this rock on which to stand. And so we celebrate this today with the chair of Peter, trusting that God speaks to us his truth through the magisterial teaching of the church.